Hey there plant friends, welcome back to part two of the Vago Garden Indoor Grow series where today I'm going to be giving you a tour of this adorable little gallon size mini indoor planter. Now usually it's all about go big or go home, but today we're going to show that go mini is the new go big, especially when we are talking about planting up a curry leaf tree. Yes, a tree indoors. And this is a staple of Indian cooking and apparently it will grow well indoors under the right conditions. So that's what we're going to find out in our new Vago indoor self-watering mini planter. So let's go ahead and unbox and set up the self-watering planter. But I'm not going to show too much detail on how this planter works because it's very similar to the herb planter that I showed you in a video just a few days ago where I discuss in detail how the self-watering works. So go back and watch that video. I'll put a link somewhere here and also at the end of this video. And just a quick peek at the indoor planter that we set up. Look how well it's doing. I actually harvested some basil for our pizza today and some chives as well. It is just so convenient to have this indoor planter sitting right on your windowsill. And I'm hoping that it's going to really fill out in the next few days. It's a very timid cat. That literally took two minutes to put together. I'm not going to be using the trellis, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. I might decide at some later point to plant something that might need the trellis along with my curry leaf plant. But for now, this curry leaf plant does not require any trellising. So I'm going to put the trellis away and take it out later in case I need it. So in today's video, we'll also talk about how to create an environment for your indoor plant or your seedlings to thrive. Now, this is the case no matter whether you use this mini planter or any other grow station, we'll get into the details of humidity, light, temperature, airflow, all of that good stuff that is needed for an indoor plant to thrive. Okay. So in the last video, we also talked about the soil and what kind of soil you need for an indoor plant, which is a little bit different than your outdoor containers, especially the fact that it's going to be an inert mix. So go back and watch that video. I talk about the reasons why, but this is what I use. No affiliation at all. This is called Sunshine Mix Number no. 4. I got it at my local big box store and it contains some very basic stuff like uh, peat moss and it's got some perlite, some mycorrhizal fungi, and um, some wetting agent. That's about it. So nothing that will really cause things like fungus to develop, which is really something you want to avoid in an indoor situation. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of the soil mix nice and moist and ready to fill up in my planter. And in the meanwhile, we are going to be talking about how to set up an indoor grow station and what are the things that you need to look for. Some of the very, very basic requirements. So let's do this. Now peat moss tends to be pretty hydrophobic when it is very dry, like it is right now. So it's gonna take some time to soak in the water. It sometimes helps to get your hands in there and mix it around a little bit. Or you can prepare earlier by letting it sit for a few hours and it will automatically absorb all the moisture that it needs. Well, this absorbed pretty quickly actually. Looks like it needs some more. I feel like I'm making bread dough. I'm into sourdough these days and I've been making a lot of sourdough lately. And so it kind of feels like that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about our growth station. This is where the magic is going to happen. This is where I'm going to be creating my ecosystem for my little curry leaf plant. This is my kitchen windowsill, my sink. I've got my little herb plant over there. I've got my mint pot right next to it. You'll see all of that in the previous video where I put all of that together and why I kept the mint separate. You can guess for obvious reasons. But uh, this room, this is my kitchen. So obviously it's probably one of the warmest rooms in the house. And it's also a little more humid 
than the rest of the house. These are all conditions that curry leaf plants absolutely love. So rather than sit out in the frost and drop all their leaves, which they will do if they are outdoors, this plant is going to continue to grow through winter. And I'm also going to be harvesting. I don't know how much I can harvest. It'll depend on how fast it's growing. Again, this is an experiment growing this indoors, but apparently they grow really well indoors. So we just need to create that right environment. So the first and most important thing that you need to worry about when you have plants growing indoors is light. You want to mimic daylight because this dark little corner over here is not going to supply the light that my curry leaf plant needs to grow. So for daylight, you need a lumen range of 2000 to 3000. That is your intensity of the light. And then there's the color you're looking for sunlight and the sunlight range is 4100 Kelvin and up. So 4100 to 6500 should be good enough. Now this little light that I picked up on Amazon also has various other features. You can change the color. So look at that. Different colors are required for different parts of the growth cycle but for the most part you want that white sunlight and you can also dim the light a little bit so you can increase the intensity and lower the intensity and it's also got a nice little timer feature so i can set this for three hours or six hours or 12 hours from the time that it starts in the morning i usually let it run for 12 hours on 12 hours off now the other thing also is distance from the light you want it to be no more than six inches away from the light for these indoor lights it's not as intense as daylight so you want the plant to be pretty close to the light so I like this because you can lower it, raise it, move it around, and I think it provides sufficient light for my plant. Now let's talk about heat. This is a heat mat. It's called a seedling heat mat, and you can get these fairly inexpensively as well on Amazon. I highly recommend that you get a heat mat if you're starting seedlings. It makes a huge difference. Most seedlings require a temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit or above in the soil for ideal sprouting and germination. And for this curry leaf plant, because it's going to be indoors, I might turn this on during the nighttime and then leave it off during the daytime. There are also mats that are available with temperature control and most people swear by that. I found that this mat without the temperature control, which is quite a bit cheaper, is sufficient and I've not seen any downside to not having that temperature control. Around about the 70 degree mark is sufficient for my seedlings. And the next video where I'm going to be setting up something even more special in a larger planter like this mini planter, I'm going to be talking about my grow tent and how I set that up. And lastly, for pest management, fungus gnats again are the biggest problem for my indoor plants, that and spider mites. So this yellow sticky trap that I have set up with my mint should catch most of the fungus gnats and for spider mites my curry leaf plant is not affected by it but mint definitely is affected by it and I just regularly check for them and I squirt with some soapy water and that usually takes care of the problem. Another very effective treatment for fungus gnats larvae is Bt. This is mosquito bits but the active ingredient is Bt. All you need to do is sprinkle a little bit on top of the soil and your fungus gnats larvae will all be killed off. Now obviously you'll have to water from the top for this to be effective, so once in a while I like to water from the top. Another really super helpful little gadget is this smart plug. And what I use this for is, say for my heater mat, if I don't have a built-in control with my heater mat, when I connect this and if I want it to be on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours, then I can set that in my app to turn the switch on and off every 12 hours. Finally, airflow is really important to mimic the outdoor conditions. It helps plants develop those really strong stems and it also helps dry out the soil at the top so that it's not always soaking wet and uh, less diseases that way. So a little portable fan like this should do the job. Again, connect it to a smart switch to come on every two to three hours or so, run for about five minutes and then go off. That's usually how I do it. Okay, let's go ahead and plant this up. And folks, if you are getting excited about starting plants indoors, whether that be seeds or whether that be little plants, do give this video a thumbs up and do comment below what you're excited about growing this winter season. By the way, this planter comes in a single pack or in a two pack. So if you get a two pack, you can maybe give one to a friend and keep one for yourself. I have a feeling my curry leaf plant and this little planter are going to be best of friends. This curry leaf plant was started from a cutting earlier this year 
that's not that easy, at least the curry leaf variety that I have, has not been too easy to start from cuttings. But this one looks like it's really well established and it's got a lovely root system. I'm gonna have to do a nice cleanup job on my kitchen, but look at those roots, just beautiful. You're gonna be so happy here. Look how nice that looks. Backfill with some soil. Now all I need to do is open this up and fill it up with some water. As I shared in my herb planter video, I like to use liquid fertilizer in the water that I put in this planter. This is my favorite Schultz all-purpose fertilizer. I have no affiliation, but this has all the range of micronutrients that you need. And it is a chemical fertilizer and I prefer to keep things very inert indoors, but you are perfectly okay to use an organic liquid fertilizer as well. Now I've already mixed up some fertilizer water here and I am going to pour it in here. And you want to pour it so that the level indicator indicates full. So isn't she looking absolutely beautiful? I've got an affiliate link in the description and a coupon code if you want to buy this. Like I said, it's available in a two pack or a single pack and it makes a great gift. And stay tuned for the final episode in the series where I'm going to be planting a larger version of this with a really interesting plant that I'm going to be growing indoors, also a tropical plant. And I'm also going to be unboxing a grow light that was sent to me by Barina. It looks pretty awesome. So I'll show you that as well. And I'll show you how I set up my grow which was something that I actually scored for free on Nextdoor. You won't believe the kind of stuff that you get for free on Nextdoor. Always look in the free section. Until next time folks, live green and love your greens. Their yeah, famous last words, the trellis actually came in pretty handy to stand up the plant which was kind of branching downward and make it grow a little bit more vertically. Yep, like it.